own a steel FS91R trimmer. Hey, congratulations. This is an awesome machine. Today, we're gonna go over what you need to do to get the most out of this machine. Have a long life, enjoy it. Don't be disgruntled by it in two or three years down the road because maybe you haven't done something right. So the FS91R is a 1.27 horsepower professional string trimmer from steel. It features a solid steel drive shaft. So it's gonna allow us some opportunities in the future to do all kinds of different stuff like potentially run a brush blade, maybe put on a gearbox attachment. So we'll cover some of that stuff today, as well as the general maintenance and the proper fuel and care of this machine. So let's start really quick with the basics. Uh, the basics as far as when it comes to what kind of fuel should I run? What should I put in this machine? So this is a two cycle machine, right? It's gonna run mixed fuel. And we're gonna do that two ways, one of two ways, probably not both of these ways all at once. That might not work very good. One of two ways. One is buying this steel HP Ultra Oil, and they're gonna sell this in different sizes. These little guys right here for a one gallon can. And I always recommend the smaller bottles. I wanna go through my gas. So one of these bottles to a one gallon can, and not just normal gas, not just any gas. If you can, please, please, please get ethanol free fuel, okay? So fuel starts going bad fairly quickly, and the fact that it has ethanol in it just causes all kinds of problems. So ethanol free one gallon with one of these bottles. And I try to do that personally every couple months. Um, you can go a little bit longer, but really we wanna be flowing through our fuel. The ultimate though is checking out this steel moto mix. And this stuff is 93 octane, ethanol free. It is blended, it is engineered for steel equipment. It's engineered for long life. So this is, this is a fuel that once I crack this lid, I actually have a two year shelf life. So ama amazing fuel. It's expensive, I'll own that, right? And I hear it all the time or I see comments, I'm not buying that. Okay, I get it, I respect it. So during the season, there's a lot of people, this is what they run, okay? And when I say during the season, you know, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, eh, maybe October. And then they're thinking, man, this thing's gonna be done. I'm done with it for the year. The weeds have stopped growing. I'm not weed eating my lawn every week or every other week. Hibernate with this stuff at least, okay? You wanna run this all year? Awesome. But come the off season, put in the moto mix. So that's fuel, right? We always need to make sure we're running mixed fuel and fresh fuel. Otherwise, down the road, it's gonna kick us in the butt and we're gonna have a carburetor problem. You're gonna come in, it doesn't wanna start or it will only run if the choke is on. And I'm just trying to help you avoid that, okay? So let's put some fuel in. Let's start this up here a minute. Let's see what we gotta do to start it up. So I'm gonna take the cap off. And the cool thing is, is you bought this at your local dealer, so there's already gas fuel in it. So you're not doing this first out of the box run. I'm gonna use some Moto Mix in here today. Get a little bit in. And this is gonna have happened uh, here at Carl's Mower and saw our opportunity just to fire it up and make sure it's right. Believe it or not, every once in a while we have a machine that comes out of the box and it's not perfect. It's man-made, we fail at stuff. So I have fuel in the tank. I've got a primer, okay? I'm gonna push this primer a few extra times this time, but generally speaking, I pump it four or five times. Pushing this primer a million times is gonna waste a lot of time, but it's not gonna hurt anything. So really four or five pumps is, the, is kind of the right number, but don't worry if you, if you give more than that, you're not gonna flood it or cause a problem. And then we have this choke right here, and on this I push in and I rotate Depends where I'm standing. I rotate counterclockwise and that sets the choke. Turning it on, it's always on. It's always ready to start. So I've got a stop button right here and I push it and it kills it, but it pops back out and it's ready to start again. So prime it, choke it, don't have to do anything with the stop button. And a little tip, this throttle trigger is attached to, let's see if I can do this, change my hand position, to the choke. So when I squeeze the trigger, Hear this click? That shut the choke off. On the oldest steel equipment and on a lot of other brands of string trimmers, when you go to start it, you actually squeeze the throttle trigger. It makes it start easier. It's a little tip, it's a little trick. So if you've got an old steel and it's starting hard, squeeze the trigger. 
On these newer ones with the choke that's attached to the throttle, don't do that because that lever is already, or that knob is already doing that for you. I'm gonna grip it right here. But before I do that, back up. We gotta be safe. We're gonna get this machine out. We're gonna go crazy. We're gonna be throwing stuff. So let's have our safety glasses on. I'd usually take the sticker off, otherwise it creates a blind spot. And let's get our ear protection on, right? These things are loud. Um, and you're gonna be out there for a long enough period of time, you don't wanna damage your ears. And I'm starting to speak from experience because I've ran enough stuff. One of two things, we can put this on the ground and hold it, make some room, hold it down and pull it. People will kind of place their knees somewhere around here. Or hold it something like this, probably not approved because I'm gonna have a spinny thing that I'm not in control of. So best to put it on the ground. I'm gonna hold it in the upright position so you can kind of see how this goes. This is a first start. This is fresh out of the box. My guess is it's gonna take a couple extra pulls. Sometimes we're surprised. So here we go. One, two, and we fired. As soon as it started, I hit the trigger and that shut the choke off. There's a running FS91. I shut it off. I don't want to make too much noise in here. Let me take off these earmuffs and glasses so I can see. When I'm out there running this, I want to run it hard, okay? There's times where I need to go lightly, you know, working around the roses next to the fence, uh, you know, around the tree. What am I trying to say? Tree trunks. So I'm not ripping them up and damaging the trees. Kind of lost my train of thought there. But run this hard. It likes to run hard, okay? Maintenance, right? You just got it. So you don't need to worry about anything right away except for really good gas and, and that. But we do have an air filter and that air filter is placed right under here. Your machine came with this fancy tool. This will take the spark plug out. This end is going to take all kinds of stuff apart. Don't go too crazy. You know, there's some stuff that you're going to want to use it for. Maybe I want to move the handle up and down. That's nice. Maybe I want to use where the shoulder strap uh, keeper is up and down. Maybe I want to get to the air filter. So I'm going to come in here, set this down, spin off the air filter cover here just a minute. How often should I check the air filter? That's a good question. You know, if I'm out on a dry day, this thing's sucking in a ton of air and it's probably not going to get filthy, nasty all in one day, but I'd make, make a habit out of checking this once a month. Maybe, maybe you're not using it enough to justify that. But the key is, is to get into habits, right? Something that, that makes us do it on a certain schedule. If I don't have a schedule, I'm not going to do it. Right. And then three, four, five years down the road, you're going to bring this into Carl's and it's not running well. And this filter is just nasty. It's growing mold. There's grass. There's, there's some fuzz growing on. You're like, Whoa, what's going on? You should have checked it. So this paper filter is just going to pop out. I'm going to move it away from the machine. I'm going to tap it on the ground. Can I see good light through it? Right. Or is it saturated in fuel or oil or, or moisture somehow? You, it's really critical that this air filter breathes. Let's put that filter back in. So air filter maintenance. We have a spark plug on here and those spark plugs, they fail, they, they uh, foul out, but not very often. But again, like my air filter, I'm probably gonna replace it. Is that once a year? Probably a little too often, but it doesn't hurt never hurts to replace the spark plug. And the spark plug on these is gonna be right under here. So I'm gonna pull this screw out and I'm gonna pop the hood. And we're gonna see two things. One is gonna be the spark plug boot. Be careful. I see a lot of people rip these spark plug boots off. They just come in and they pull and it actually pulls it off of the wire and it creates more of a problem. So when you go to take this off, you wanna kinda of shake it wiggle it out slowly or sometimes that doesn't work and you're going to take something like this and just sort of pry it and now I've got my spark plug boot off and my, my spark plug is accessible again with the tool that it came with 
and I can simply take that out. If you pull it out and it looks beautiful, pop it back in. Like I said, once a year is probably too often, but it doesn't hurt to, to check it or replace it. And then right here, this little screw, probably don't mess with it. But under here are the valves, right? This is a, a four mix engine, okay? Four stroke engine running on mix oil. So don't mess that up. But at some point in time, these valves are gonna need adjusted. And traditionally it's between 125 and 150. How am I gonna know? How, how many hours do I have? Well, there's two ways. One is maybe I got this cool steel smart connector that connects to my phone that's Bluetooth that keeps track of the hours and the maintenance. Pretty cool tool if you haven't checked this out. Check out the steel smart connector. The other way is the pull. Right now, this pulls very easy. As those valves come out of adjustment, it will tell you that pull will become chunkier. You'll, you'll feel more of the compression on the compression strokes. So keep an eye on your pull. When that pull starts getting a little stiff, a little harder, time to adjust the valves. Let's move on down, move on down here. Not a lot to do in this area, although there is a little screw hiding right under here that allows me to adjust the throttle cable as it stretches. So over time, this throttle cable that's running from here up to the carburetor is gonna, is gonna stretch, and I can simply put a little screwdriver in there and turn it clockwise and, and tighten it up. This is where my shoulder strap, this came with the machine, is gonna hook. And I can move this up and down a little bit. I can take this, get rid of it if you like. If this is in your way, cut it out. It's really only there as a visual aid for vibration regulations in Europe. So maybe you're in Europe and you're watching this, cool, great. But if you're here in the US and you're watching this, this is irrelevant, okay? So it can come out so I have a little bit more play. And then I also have the ability to move this handle. A lot of this, right, is, is being comfortable for me. What's my height? How tall or how short? What's gonna feel comfortable? I'm gonna be out there for a half an hour or more. Let's make it work for you. Okay, moving down. This has the steel auto cut 25-2. I'm not gonna get into this in this video, but we have a great video on how to rewind this head. So check it out, um, refer back to that. It's gonna help you avoid a lot of the problems that people have with a bump head and, and not getting them to feed right. But we do have a little bit of maintenance right here. This, which is either gonna use a 13 millimeter, half inch, if you don't have a 13 millimeter, that'll work. And this little screw comes out. You can also use your T27 Torx that came with it. And I have this tube of grease from steel. It is called Super Lube. And I'm simply 50 hours or so for a lot of people once a year. Again, right, routines. I'm gonna screw this in and I'm gonna give it a light squeeze and I'm gonna spin this head a couple times. That's it, that's all I need. Just a little bit every year. If you do do it, you're gonna get long life. You're talking probably never having a gearbox failure. If you fail to do it, I see usually somewhere between four and 600 hours, depending on the application that a, a gearbox is gonna fail and it's dead. Not the end of the world, you can buy a new gearbox, but if I can avoid that expense, I might as well. On this end, because I have a steel FS91 that is a shaft driven machine, I have a lot of options on what I can run on the end of this. I can run the bump head, I can run a Duro cut 25-2 head that takes the strips of line. I can run a poly cut head. I can also purchase this blade installation kit, blade conversion kit right here. This is gonna have the larger deflector, larger guard. I know that's not the proper term, but the larger deflector and the hardware needed to mount a blade. It also is gonna have a little handle in there or barrier bar as, as it's called that goes right here that prevents this machine or reduces the opportunity of this machine to kick back and, and the operator come in contact with something spinning that's uh, a little dangerous. So um, we got a video on installing a blade. That's also a great video. When you put a blade on these things, it just makes it a completely new machine. I mean, let me tell you, around the yard, around the lawn, cutting grass, line head, that's the way to go all day long. But as I'm getting out into some, some nastier, burlier stuff, some heavier stuff, check out a blade kit. It is gonna make this FS91 shine. 
What else do we need to know about it? Hey, we've covered all of the, the basics on the maintenance. We've covered how to start it, some of the things you can do with it, how to move some stuff around. I'm a big fan of this steel trimmer. The FS91 has been, been around for years. Previously, it was called the FS90. It was refreshed a few years ago, giving it some, some nice features like the stop button and the choke that's connected to the throttle trigger and a better air filter and a bigger fuel tank. You're gonna love this machine if you take the proper steps to maintain it, to care for it when it comes to your fuel, when it comes to greasing your gearbox, when it comes to maintaining your air filter. Hey, let's have a long life with this machine so that you can get the most out of it. Don't forget, you can always refer back to your owner's manual, right? You got this nice manual when you bought it, the Steel FS91. It's gonna give you the service scheduler, some of the safety points. You're also hopefully picked up this trimmer and brush cutter safety manual. Not a bad idea to review that. These things are powerful. They can fling some stuff. So you always want to be aware of what's going on around you and what you're trimming. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting Carl's Mower and Saw and your local steel dealer, helping you get the right equipment to maintain your property, to make it pop, to make it beautiful and the best place on the block. Hey, this is Josh from Carl's Mower and Saw. Thanks for watching our videos. We're proud of the fact that we've been serving you with the best in outdoor power equipment since 1990. We're glad that you had an opportunity to sit down, watch our videos, learn something about an exciting new product that we have, something that interests you for your property, or really how to use your equipment to the best of its ability. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube. We're excited to share more information with you. See you soon.